My outpost. The eternal goal. By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, shalt in blessing, I shall bless thee. Genesis 22, 16 and 17. Abraham has reached the place where he is in touch with the very nature of God. My goal is God himself. At any cost, dear Lord, by any road. At any cost, by any road, means nothing of the self-chosen in the way God brings us to the goal. There is no possibility of questioning when God speaks if he speaks to his own nature in me. Prompt obedience is the only result. When Jesus says, come, I simply come. When he says, let go, I let go. When he says, trust in God in this matter, I do trust. The whole working out is the evidence that the nature of God is in me. God's revelation of himself to me is determined by my character, not by God's character. In other words, as I obey, I reveal God in me. As I do not obey, I reveal God is not in me. And as I do so, then I reveal whether God be with me or whether God be against me in causing me to come back to the place where I would just simply obey. To obey is better than sacrifice. By the discipline of obedience, I get to the place where Abraham was and I see who God is. I never have a real God until I have come face to face with him in Jesus Christ. Then I know that in all the world, my God, there is none but thee and there is none but thee. The promises of God are of no value to us unless by obedience we understand the nature of God. It is not enough to simply say that I know the scriptures and I quote them and I get what I want. Rather, it is better to have said that I know God and God knows me and that I interrelate with him in a personal way than to get the things that may be patronizing to me in the sense of it's a religious expression and not a relationship obedience. Because God will not always give you, or God may give you something that you've asked for that you should not have had. Because the literal truth is you'll learn from it that it's better to say thy will than my will be done. For if God give me what I want, then I would not accomplish the purposes he wants for me. But if I say thy will be done, God only give me those things you want for me. Then I limit that process of asking for the things that I know I shouldn't have. And God will not give to me those things that I know are wrong for me. The promises of God are of no value to us until by obedience we understand the very nature of God. We read some things in the Bible 365 times and they mean nothing to us. And then all of a sudden we see what God means. Because in some particular way we have obeyed God and instantly his nature is opened up. How he does things is revealed to us. All the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen. The yea must be born of obedience, when by the obedience of our lives we say amen to a promise, and then that promise is ours. Not because it's a transactional basis without God being personal and real in it, but rather, or claiming it and naming it so that we can have it and we got it, but rather those things remove God from the equation and they make him into being a formula rather than a person bestowing the gift or the promise. Making the promise personal to you is the job of a personal God, the real Holy Spirit working in you. Because if you go about doing only those things that you claim the promise rather than the promiser, then you wind up finding yourself one day standing before Jesus saying, have we not done all these things in your name? Have we not claimed the promises? Have we not cast out demons? Have we not raised the dead? And Jesus might, might say to you, Depart from me, I never knew you. For the sake of Abraham, who was willing to obey as God said, do as God said, accept what God said and did it, when God said it, the same thing is true with you and I. It's not enough to simply go, oh, well, I've got all the promises of God and I can claim them, or he's got to reward me because I tithe, but rather... It's more of a relationship with God that his love for you is more than able to be expressed because your love for him says, don't give me anything that you don't want me to have, Father. 
for I would rather have you than all the promises in the world and all those that are contained in the book called the Word of God. For Jesus, if I don't have you, what good is a promise without you?